I'm great. How are you? Good. Thank you. Uh, could you briefly introduce yourself to our viewers, please? Uh, yeah. So I'm Alex. I'm the CEO of Alio. Um, before this, I was at A16Z Crypto, where I spent two years. And then before all that, I spent nine years in the U.S. Army. And I guess I also went to grad school at Stanford University. So that's me. Wow. Very impressive. Thank you so much. Um, so what brings you to Seoul this time? Uh, I'm here for Korea Blockchain Week, mm -hmm. one of my favorite crypto events around the world. Um, the Korean community has been super welcoming. I was here last year for ETH Seoul as mm -hmm. well. And so it's been really fun to, uh, to be back and share a little bit about what Alio is up to. Great. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> so next question is a little bit of like ice breaking question. So we would like to know what was the first coin that you bought? When and why did you buy it? Wow, this is a good one. <laughs> Um, the first coin that I bought was probably Bitcoin, um, and that was in 2016. I had gotten into crypto in 2015. In 2016, the first thing I learned wow. about was Bitcoin. Uh, from a, I learned about Bitcoin in the Middle East, working, you know, with the Syrian refugees, wow. and uh, so that was my my first one. Um, let me see. I, but to make it fun, let me go back and think about the first ICO I was in. I did. I was. I was doing a little ICO uh, investing in 2017. I think the first one was Zero X. Zero X. Zero X. Also, and I. I had a friend who told me about a little token called Binance BNB, which I thought was a scam, and I should definitely have taken his advice. Yeah. Uh, and I'd be retired. We would like to know what was the motivation behind the creation of Alio, and what problem is Alio trying to solve? Uh, yeah, great question. So the motivation behind Alio is really creating a platform for privacy preserving applications. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as I'm sure most of um, you know, folks in the Korean community know, blockchains by default, like Bitcoin and Ethereum are fully transparent. They're fully public ledgers. You can search, you know, for any account on Ethereum and see what the balance is, right. see the transactions. Mm -hmm. So um, we, and by we, I mean the founders of Alio, thought that um, that was holding back crypto from you know certain use cases, even finance. I think most financial use cases kind of rely on mm -hmm. privacy implicitly. And so we wanted to build something that kind of, that, that brought the programmability of Ethereum, but, but the privacy of Zcash, right? And so that was really the motivation mm -hmm. uh, around Alio in the beginning. Um, and yeah, so, and here we are. Uh, Alio is still in the testnet phase, right? But when it launches mainnet, what would be the main use case of Alio, do you think? Uh, yeah, so we're in our third testnet. It's been a long journey. Appreciate everyone's patience as we've gone through <laughs> all those all those phases. Very excited. Um, but yeah, we're in our third and final testnet, and mainnet we're scheduled. We've got planned for this year. Very excited about mm -hmm. that. And the use, I think there's several use cases, but the one that I'm most excited about is um, around identity and authentication. Um, I think it's a great use case for Alio because when we think about identity and like, sh you know, sharing some fact about ourselves, you want to be really sure that you're only sharing just the relevant information with the, you know, with the authorizing party and not too much. Um, and I think, you know, this is why many identity applications on other blockchains, I, I don't think it really taken off is because again, everything's just fully transparent. And so Alio enables you to prove facts about yourself without revealing why they're true. Mm -hmm. Or you could write a program that does that. And I think that not only solves a problem in web three, it also actually solves a problem in web two. And I think it creates a whole new paradigm for authentication and authorization yeah. and mm -hmm. cybersecurity. ZK proof, uh, zero knowledge proof has been getting a lot of attention. So how does Alio integrate ZK tech into its system? How long do you have? No, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's it's actually kind of bottom to top. I mean, really, we built Alio. I mean, one a question we get a lot is why did we build Alio as a layer one and not a layer two? And the reason was that a layer we thought about doing a layer two on Ethereum at first, but you know, Ethereum wasn't designed with the privacy preserving computation use case in mind. So as a result, like some of the, the basic primitives that are available in Ethereum or some of the cryptographic curves that are used are just less efficient for that use case. So we built Alio from the ground up to support efficient 
zero knowledge cryptography. Mm -hmm. And that's what enables it to be practical today. And I think the other thing that differentiates us from some other projects that use ZK, <laughs> which isn't that many, frankly, um, a lot of projects use snarks for the compression property of, you know, of uh, succinct uh, zero knowledge proofs, but not a lot of people use the ZK or privacy preserving element. But one thing that differentiates us from those that do is that we're fully permissionless, which I think is a really important part of mm -hmm. the blockchain ethos that I'm, yeah. I'm really proud of. So, um, so yeah, but Z, so Alio from bottom to top, you know, uses cutting edge ZK cryptography from the consensus to the VM, our, D, our domain specific language, Leo, lets an average programmer have the power of ZK cryptography without having to be a cryptographer. So, um, yeah, it really is infused in everything that we do. Thank you so much. We would like to know what makes Alio special compared to other LM blockchains out there? Yeah. You want um, to brag? Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, I'm obviously not to be a broken record, but I think the the privacy preserving nature of it is definitely unique among L1s. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the only other L1 that has that is Zcash, really. Um, I guess you know you have Monero and Zcash and some of these ones that are focused on private payments. Mobile coin is another one. Um, and they use different techniques. Mo um, Monero, Zcash use different cryptography and mobile coin uses um, a trusted execution environment. Um, but they offer privacy for payments where Alio offers privacy for smart contracts. Mm -hmm. um, and I think private, permissionless, programmable, the three Ps, like Alio is the only chain where you can write a program, deploy the program, create a proof about the program and submit that proof as a transaction all fully permissionlessly. Wow. Um, so I'm really excited about that because it's a first. I think, I, I hope actually, you know, I'm obviously proud of Alio being unique, but I actually hope that it inspires other people to launch similar protocols. Mm -hmm. I mean, the same way that, you know, I think Ethereum has really become, you know, a really impressive, the impressive protocol that it is because it inspired so many people other teams to like iterate and try different yeah. things around mm -hmm. it. And uh, so I think, I, I hope that the paradigm that we've come up with, which is really a synthesis of prior work like Ethereum and Zcash, as I mentioned already, you know, I hope it inspires others to kind of uh, continue to expand down those directions and build new and cool applications that are only possible in this paradigm. I'm, I'm wondering what will be some resources available for the builders thinking of building on Elio? and what kind of support can they get? Well, we've tried to make it as easy as possible for people to build on Alio. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why we created Leo, first off. Um, and we have a online IDE, Leo Playground. Mm -hmm. um, so if you go to leolang.org, leo-lang.org, that's our, our website for Leo, and there's a mm -hmm. playground there, and you can, several examples are already preloaded where you can get a feel for writing Leo applications, yeah. right? And then you can compile it right in the browser and you can generate a proof. Uh, you can also go to our SDK, which is at alio.tools. And you can take you know, that program that you wrote in the Leo Playground and you can actually generate a proof that you can then submit as a transaction onto the blockchain. Um, so we have these, you know, those are the first two places that I generally send developers to leo-lang.org and then alio.tools. And that's a good place to just get, start messing around with, uh, you know, with the blockchain and writing programs, saying transactions. But we also have a really comprehensive set of documentation right. on our website, which we just redesigned. I, if people haven't checked it out, I highly recommend it. I'm really proud of the work there. Um, and yeah, the, the documentation has several example programs of types of things you can write, explain some basic concepts about ZK, right. um, et cetera. So um, those are the places I would recommend people get started if they're, right. if they're interested. Uh, what's the LEO BFT consensus mechanism mm. to the viewers? Yeah, so Alio BFT is a hybrid proof of stake, proof of work mm -hmm. consensus. Um, it's the specific flavor of proof of stake is called Bull Shark Narwhal, which was pioneered at what used to be called Libra or Diem, and then Aptos and Sui, two projects right. that spun out of Diem, mm -hmm. used it. And um, and so it has some advantages over traditional proof of stake protocols because it can scale to a larger number of validators. Right without slowing down the network. That's mm -hmm. a constraint of traditional kind of PBFT, yes. the most common proof of stake mm -hmm. blockchains have a limited number of validators. And so Bullshark Narwhal has the advantage that you can go slightly higher than that and not suffer a performance penalty. So that's that's kind of half of the story with Alio BFT. But the other half is 
um, you know, we also have this concept of provers mm -hmm. and provers are kind of, you can think of them as miners, yeah. right? But instead of just doing SHA-256 or mm -hmm. simple hashing, they're generating zero knowledge proofs for the protocol. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and as part of that, they're recipients of and key to the economic rewards from the blocks, right? From the block rewards. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's a really novel design. By the way, I should say at this point, you know, obviously our, our technical team, you know, has been driving this. But we got worked very closely with the A16Z research mm -hmm. team, Tim Ruffgarden and others. And they were really, really helpful in helping us design this protocol. And we're really excited to showcase this because I think it's something that others can use too. And I guess last thing on the provers, you know, I'm excited because Alio is going to bootstrap, I think, a proving ecosystem, mm -hmm. which then applies to not just proving for the protocol, but proving for users and different applications too. So there's, I think there's a lot of cool things that differentiate Alio BFT, and I'm excited for people to, uh, to get to see it in action. So you have already mentioned some resources for the builders, but I would like to know for those who want to learn more about Alio as a beginner, uh, what kind of resources uh, are available for them and how can they get started? Yeah, so I would recommend just checking out our website, uh, awesome. alio.org. So yeah. we have a lot of content there. It's kind of just pretty basic. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess like the basic copy is kind of like tells you maybe uh, the headline of what you need to know. Yeah, I've read some of them. And we've got some blog. I, you know, I, I've written some blog posts and we have, you know, some other folks on the team that also write blog content across the spectrum of knowledge, I would say. Right. Um, but I think there's also other, there's many other great resources out there to learn about zero knowledge proofs mm -hmm. from the basic level. One of my favorites is the Zero Knowledge Podcast. I highly recommend. Podcast, yeah. Yep. It's run by my friend Anna Rose. Um, and I think there's, there's, you know, at this point, there are over 200 episodes. I don't even know what number they're oh, on, wow. but that's it's, there's a lot of really good content in there. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that's, that's what I would recommend for people who are interested to just, yeah. just get started. Check out the blog, listen to, listen to that podcast. And uh, yeah, I think that's, a, that, that's how, what I would recommend. Thank you. Great to know. Thank you so much. Is there anything you want to say to the potential Korean builders or Korean users out there in Korea? Because you're in Korea right now. Yeah. Um, so I would say I'm extremely excited for you know, folks in the Korean community to get their hands on our network and play around with it and build whatever they want. Again, this is like one of the cool things about running a permissionless network is I can't stop anyone from deploying whatever whatever they want. I think this is, you know, this is open source. Everything is op completely open source. Would encourage people to, you know, fork it, mess around with it, submit pull requests, our repositories, deploy programs, leave comments. You know, we have a, um, a repository for um, that we call ARCs, which is like the EIP equivalent. Leave comments and you know, because I think this is, you know, obviously we're proud of what we've built, but if if all it ever is is something that just we, the team built, then it's never going to achieve its potential. But we really need you all, the community, to build this with us, right? That's what makes a community, that, that's what makes a community a community. That's what makes these projects durable and long lasting. Um, so that would be my message. I would, I would say don't be shy, no matter, uh, you know, how... If you're intimidated, you know, don't be. I think we've tried to make it as easy as possible to participate in many, many different ways. And, uh, and I hope that you feel welcome to being part of the ALEO community and, and contribute. So, Thank you. Uh, last but not least, I think everyone's going to be so curious about this one. Um, when mainnet? <laughs> um, so we're planning to launch mainnet this year. So yeah. Um, so yeah, so I think end of the year is the goal. And we're lining stuff up right now and we'll have more to share soon about the specific date. But, you know, the one thing I will say is we're on the last phase of the last test net, right? So the, once the validators all start coming online throughout mm -hmm. the community, mm -hmm. that's really it. You know, once, once that, then at that point, it's just, we, we just decide when to turn it on. You know, I think there's a lot that goes into it. You know, we're going to just some, just to give you some of the preview of like some of the logistics that go into this. You know, there'll be a foundation that gets created to, you know, kind of sep separate from the company to foster the open source ecosystem. Um, you know, we want to make sure we have places to, you know, for you know, people to use or to like store tokens. So there needs to be a wallet, you know, for, you know, people with bigger holdings or even for, you know, the, uh, the team, we need to make sure we have a custody solution, all right. of these kind of logistical things. But right now I feel confident that we're on track to meet that target. So 
I'm really excited that Mainnet launch is right around the corner. I'm very excited too. Okay, thank you so much and thank you for the interview. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Thank you everyone.